Hello listeners, I am Nadi Mindy Chandra Sri Sai from Daily Science and Food Technology Department of Banaras Hindu University. This lecture discusses about the membrane separation process that is mechanisms and food industry applications of microfiltration, nanofiltration, ultrafiltration and reverse osmosis. Coming to the overview, these are the topics that we would be discussing. Coming to the introduction, the the membrane process are basically the unit operations for variety of separations in chemical and food industries and these membrane process are driven basically by three uh, forces that is pressure concentration and electric force and this can be dif differentiated according to the type of driving force molecular size or type of operations in membrane separation processes membrane is a basic unit hence a membrane is a semi-permeable barrier used to separate two phases that is permeate and retent on the basis of particle size, electric charge, etc. Membrane separation process are a combination of filtration, purification, sieving and diffusion mechanisms. The separation efficiency is usually affected by different processing factors like feed composition, pH, temperature, pressure, feed flow and interactions between feed component and membrane surface. Coming to the principle of membrane separation, this separation is accomplished with the application of driving force on the solution or the feed to pass through a specific membrane. And in this membrane separation process, the feed strip is separated into two fractions like you can see in this picture this is a membrane and this is a feed this feed has the solute particles and the solvent like the uh, cream color is the solute particles and the blue color molecules are the solvent particles so the feed has both solute and solvent particles now after the uh, af after the uh, feed is uh, feed is uh, led into the uh, stream it is it passes through the uh, membrane and then according to the particle size and uh, pore size of the membrane the uh, solvent and uh, the solute particles are permeated and in this permeate uh, we can see uh, we have few solute particles and most of them are solvent particles uh, so the basic definition of permeate is the fraction of feed that permeates through membrane is called permeate and retinent is a fraction of feed stream that is retained over that is that does not permit through membrane is called retinent. Coming to the types of membranes, we have uh, two types of membranes that is organic polymers and inorganic polymers. In organic polymers, the materials are used cellulose and its derivative polymer, polyamides, polyolefins, uh, polycarbonate, polysulfones, chlorine and uh, fluorine substituted hydrocarbons. And in inorganic membranes, uh, we have uh, materials based on oxides of silicon, uh, zirconium, titanium, and uh, aluminium. And these are the principal requirements of membrane. Uh, membrane. This is a high permeate flux. Basically, the flux is a flow rate of water applied per unit area per time, and high flux increases the diffusion or filtration efficiency and then chemical stability and inertness, then good mechanical strength, thermal stability, good retention capability, smooth and falling resistant. Basically, the membrane falling is a process by which the particles or the colloid particles or solute macromolecules are, are deposited or adsorbed onto the membrane pores or onto the membrane surface by physical and chemical interactions or mechanical action, which results in smaller or blocked mem membrane pores and then resistance against uh, microbial action, affordable cost, and long service life. So these are the basic principal uh, requirements of membrane. And then we have modes of membrane filtration, which are two types, dead end and cross flow. In dead end filtration, membrane filtration, the feed flow is perpendicular to the membrane surface, and in cross flow filtration, the flow of solution is parallel to the membrane surface. In dead end, uh, dead end uh, filtration, you can see this causes large reduction in flux. Like the feed is uh, to, feed is perpendicular to the membrane surface, then the reduction is caused in flux. That is, the permeate is very less. That is not efficient. The filtration is not efficient. And coming to the cross flow, 
the cross flow causes turbulence and produces shear which gives a uh, efficient filtration like you can see the solvent permeated in cross flow is more well compared to the solvent uh, permeated in dead end filtration next are the factors controlling membrane processing now we have three major kinds of factors that is membrane properties feed properties and hydrostatic effect Coming to the membrane properties, we have five factors that is pore size, thickness, porosity, rotosity, and compa compaction. If we increase these five factors, we also see increase in effect of flux if the pore size increases and decrease in effect of flux if the uh, thickness increases and increase in effect on flux if the porosity increases and if we increase rotosity and compaction, effect on flux will decrease. Then coming to the feed processes, if we increase the concentration and viscosity of feed, then the effect on flux will decrease. And if we increase the temperature of feed, the effect on flux will increase. Then coming to the hydrostatic effects, that is transmembrane pressure and cross flow velocity. If we increase these two properties, the effect on flux will also increase. Coming to the classification. We have three types of uh, three types of membrane separation process based on the driving force. First force would be pressure, and second one is potential driven membrane, and the third one is concentration driven membrane. We would be discussing about pressure driven membrane, that is microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, and reverse osmosis. Coming to the potential driven membrane, we have electrodialysis, electroosmosis, and coming to the concentration driven membrane, we have dialysis. Coming to another classification based on the size of material, we have a microfiltration whose membrane pore size is 0.1 to 1 micrometer where suspended particles and bacteria retain and virus, multivalent ions, monovalent ions, water permeate. And coming to ultrafiltration, the pore size is 0.01 to 1 micrometer where the suspended particles, bacteria and virus retain but the multivalent ions, monovalent ions, and water permeate. Coming to nanofiltration, the pore size is 0.001 to 0.01 micrometer, where the suspended particles, bacteria, virus, retain, and at times multivalent ions retain or permeate, and then monovalent ions and water permeate. Then coming to reverse osmosis, the pore size is very small, that is less than 0.001 micrometer, that is 1 nanometer, here, all the particles retain except for the water. Now, coming to the categories of pressure driven membranes, uh, these are the four types of um, membrane process we would be discussing, and these are the categories uh, which are to be constant, uh, which are to be focused. First one is pore size. We can observe that the pore size is decreasing, like uh, the microfiltration has a bigger pore size. Then while coming to the reverse osmosis, we can in we can see the decrease in the pore size. And then coming to the pressure bar, uh, operating pressures, which is in bars, we can observe that the pressure, operating pressure, is higher as the uh, pore size decreases. So the uh, higher uh, pressure is used in reverse osmosis, whereas microfiltration uses very low uh, pressure. And then this is the basis of ejection. And these are the solutes to be uh, separated in each of the process. And then this is the purpose. Uh, classification of turbidity uh, removal is the purpose of microfiltration and ultrafiltration. Decolorization and purity and increase uh, is the purpose of nanofiltration. And concentration and desalination is the purpose of reverse osmosis. Coming to the first membrane separation process, that is microfiltration, is a low pressure cross flow membrane process and it designates a separation process with larger membrane pore size, that is macromolecules. And microfiltration separates the colloidal and suspended particles in the range of 0.05 to 10 microns and it is used for bacterial removal, fermentation, broth clarification, and biomass clarification and recovery. Microfiltration is used as pretreatment before ultrafiltration or reverse osmosis. Coming to the applications of microfiltration, we have a clarification of beer and wine, and then removal of oil droplets, removal of suspended solids and fats, 
and then pre-filtration of wastewater streams and then gener uh, generating in food, in food processing industries. And coming to the applications in dairy industry, we use microfiltration for making low heat sterile milk, uh, removal of bacteria from milk and pre-treatment of cheese whey. Coming to the ultrafiltration, it is a selective fractiona fractionation process and they operate under low pressure that is up to 10 bars. And ultrafiltration lies between microfiltration and nanofiltration. And in terms of pore size, this can range from 0.1 to 0.01 microns, that is 1 to 100 nanometer. Ultrafiltration allows for the concentration of high molecular weight proteins, uh, macromolecules, and other small suspended solids. Polymers like polysulfones, polyamides, PVC, polystyrene, polycarbonates, and polyethers are normally used. Coming to the applications of ultrafiltration, we can use this for manufacturing of different types of cheese milk by concentrating milk. That is, uh, the, the inorganic sol, sols, lactose and water are removed as per meat, whereas fat globules and proteins are retained over the membrane. Hence, we get a concentrated milk retinate and this can be used in manufacturing of um, many types of cheese. And then coming uh, to the next application that is whey protein concentrate. And the last one is uh, isolating soybean protein production. Coming to the nanofiltration, the size and charge play a role in nanofiltration separation process. And it is also known as loose over osmosis because the last, uh, because uh, it's, it is similar as reverse osmosis, but the monovalent ions may or may not permeate. Then coming to the pressure range, 10 to 50 bars is a pressure operating pressure range and the pore size ranges between 0.1 to 10 nanometer that is 0.001 micrometer to 0.01 micrometer. The mass transfer mechanism in nanofiltration is diffusion and nanofiltration membrane separates a certain ionic so solutes such as sodium and chloride, monovalent ions as well as water and nanofiltration membrane retains larger ionic species including divalent and multivalent ions and more complex molecules. Coming to the uh, applications, it is used to remove mainly uh, the monovalent ions and a partly demineralization and water removal is obtained. And nanofiltration can be performed uh, using separation applications such as color removal and desalination. Coming to the reverse osmosis, it is a membrane separation process driven by a pressure gradient in which the membrane separates the solvent generally water from other components of the solution and the solvent flow is opposite to the normal osmotic flow and coming to the mechanism by exerting a hydraulic pressure greater than the sum of the osmotic pressure difference and the pressure loss of diffusion through the membrane that can cause water to diffuse in the opposite direction into the less concentrated solution is called reverse osmosis basically if a vessel is equipped with a semi-permeable membrane and it is filled with two different solutions of varying concentration, then the water of less concentrated solution will pass through the membrane into the, uh, into the solution with high concentration due to osmotic pressure difference to get equilibrium. If external pressure higher than the uh, osmotic, now reverse osmosis is if external pressure higher than the solution's osmotic pressure is applied on the higher concentration solution, then the, mo then the movement of water can be reversed. That is, now water will flow, flow from higher concentration solution to lower concentration solution, which will result in increasing the concentration of previously concentrated solution and further dilution of less concentrated solution that is previously concentrated solution would be the salts and contaminants and or else the dilution of less concentrated is water diluting water like it, it we get pure form of water and all of this phenomenon is called reverse osmosis and the greater the pressure applied the more rapid the diffusion using reverse osmosis we are able to concentrate various solutes either dissolved or dispersed in a solution the process is, you pro is used to produce relatively pure water or concentrated solution of microsolutes from a given salt solution the membrane configuration is usually cross flow <clears throat> And coming to the operational pressure that is 30 to 60 bars it is the highest and the pore size is very 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 low that is 0.0001 micrometer to 0.0001 microns and then in reverse osmosis system water is a pre 
permeating material referred to as permeate and the remaining solution considered with the solutes is called retinate. Reverse osmosis is a high efficient technique for dewatering process streams concentrating or separating low molecular weight substances in solution or cleaning waste water. It has the ability to concentrate all dissolved and suspended solids. The permeate contains a very low concentration of dissolved solids and reverse osmosis is typically used for desalination of seawater. Coming to the applications in food industry, reverse osmosis is used for the must correction, rejuvenation and dehalkalization of wine and it is also used to concentrate and purify fruit juices, enzymes, fermentation liquors and vegetable oils, pre-concentrated juices and dairy products uh, before evaporation. Concent it also concentrates wheat starch, citric acid, egg white, milk, coffee, syrup, natural extracts and flavors. It is also used to determine and purify water from bore wells or rivers or desalination of seawater. Water and wastewater purification is also an application and then concentration of wheat during cheese manufacture is also. Coming to the advantages of membrane separation technology, the advantages are separation of streams or components is can be done at low temperature which will minimize the thermal damage and also the separation of the components component is in its native form. We can we use less energy and it is easy to operate and environmentally safe and this separation process does not denature the proteins and we do not require any chemicals and this can remove 90 to 100 percent pathogens from the water sample it also allows the filtration of any volumes of non-turbid water through the disk. Then coming to the disadvantages, uh, this could be the turbid water cannot be used and there may be a risk of bacterial abundance and then the glass, glass filters or the membrane filters can get damaged and only liquids are sterilized by this method that is a limitation and then filters are costly to repair mainly nano filters and then coming to the restrictions or uh, of supplies used in filters or alter the effectiveness of this process such as damage of gas filters, fracture of the membrane filter and concentration of the filtrate. And uh, this process requires high differential pressure as you can see reverse osmosis requires 30 to 60 bars which is significantly high. And then uh, clogging can occur in this process. Then come, these are the overall uh, applications of the uh, membrane separation process. Now I conclude by saying that membrane separation technology serves as alternatives to various conventional methods like evaporation, centrifugation and filtration etc. This widely usage of membrane separation process over conventional methods is mainly due to following reasons that is minimize thermal damage to product, energy saving and better product quality. And as demand of novel food products or ingredients is increasing, membrane processing can create novel products and ingredients with desired characteristics. Membrane technology is considered as green technology due to their efficient and energy utilization without using chemicals and additives. Here are the references I used in the lecture.